Welcome to Cutting Edge Health. Today we're talking about bravado and how it might be a treatment for mood, potentially depression, and maybe some other things as well. If we haven't met, I'm Dr. Orlando Landrum, who is the founder of Cutting Edge Health. And one of the things that we help you do is learn how to be able to treat, how to be able to deal with pain, how to be able to deal with improving your health, and how to be able to improve your mood and overall function. Today, we're talking about a product that is called Stravato. And so what is Stravato? Stravato itself is a treatment that actually is esketamine. So what is esketamine? Well, it sounds very similar to ketamine. Well, if you take a look, one of the papers that we're going to talk about is the role of ketamine in the treatment of psychiatric disorders. Well, esketamine or Stravato is a spray. It's a nasal spray, as a matter of fact. Most people would be like, I've never heard of a nasal spray for possibly mood. And I understand that that very well may be the case. But this is different, and it helps treat depression. How bad is depression right now in the United States? Well, pretty significant. So depression right now is probably one of the greatest burdens of most countries. It's estimated to be about 17% of most people right now. And so when we take a look at Spravato, what it provides as potential relief is the following is it's a treatment that is a nasal treatment that allows for improvement that's not necessarily related or dependent upon medication alone. So traditionally, when we take a look at some papers that look at esketamine for treatment-resistant depression, one of the things that we find is the following, is that it is a different enantiomer. So what is an enantiomer? It's if you were to take a look at a chemical formulation, it has kind of mirror images, well, this is a mirror image of one of the elements of ketamine. And that has been approved by the FDA in conjunction with some oral antidepressants to be able to treat really hard to treat depression. So how is it utilized? Well, it's a spray formulation, as I made mention of before, when you kind of take a look at this box, what you can see is if you were to take that, it looks a little like so. So you can be able to kind of pick it out this is what the spray sort of looks like, and we'll kind of go through how that's supposed to be administered. But at the end of the day, it's treated in the following fashion. So you have where you have an initial treatment, you have another treatment thereafter that's kind of a maintenance type treatment, and then you kind of have that finalization. So if we're showing it to you in pictures, it looks a little like the following. So you have an initial dose, and then you take a look and you're able to utilize it potentially twice a week. And then you're able to kind of taper it and make some decisions about how well is this providing you some degree of benefit? I think some people are commenting who are normally joining us. And as always, we appreciate you guys tuning in. Thank you so much for joining us live. For those of you who are seeing us at a later date, please do leave your comments um, and questions that you might have. And if there are certain things that we can answer that weren't covered in the talk, by all means, let me know. So what does this kind of look like as potential treatments? What it looks like is the following. So in essence, what you do is you take that nasal spray, you place it into the nostril, and this is done, let me be clear, this is not done at home. This is done within the doctor's office. And there's a reason for that. The reason why is because you can have some increase in heart rate, you can have some increase in blood pressure. And so we wanna be clear that those things are monitored in a healthcare facility, in a healthcare setting that's gonna give us the safest possible treatment, but also be able to improve mood in an incredibly good way. So taking a look, it's basically a treatment. You're allowing that spray to get into the area where it needs to go. You take a gentle sniff, and then you are able to do that in the second nostril, right? And you're able to give more than one spray if needed, right? So how does this kind of shake out over time? Well, it looks like the following. It looks like basically initially you start off with doing two treatments during the first few weeks. And then after that, you may do a little bit more than that. And then after that, you can be able to kind of be maintained kind of weekly or every two weeks, right? And so that's kind of the, the treatment paradigm. So let's look at some papers that kind of give us a little bit better understanding about this esketamine, which is different from IV ketamine, which can be used for a lot of different things. And we're gonna kind of go into details about that in just a second. So. How does ketamine kind of work, right? What are some of the postulates for it? Well, one of the things that is thought is that maybe it has to do with something that's called glutamate. And glutamate is the major excitatory neurotransmitter in the central nervous system. 
And that can play a role within the problems that exist with MDD, which again stands for major depressive disorder. And so treatments can be able to potentially improve that depression that exists. So how does ketamine influence this? Well, as we know, it blocks something that's called the NMDA receptor, and that can have impact on different neurons that can potentially change different pathways and maybe influence glutamate potentially. So one of the figures from that paper that was referenced earlier is the following. So as you can kind of see, you can see that esketamine, which references bravado, and how it can be influential on different pathways that can cause increased release of glutamate. And you can be able to see how it affects different downstream mechanisms that can be able to improve mood, right? So how does esketamine differ from ketamine? And that's what we're gonna talk about over the next few slides. So people would say, well, you got a nasal spray. It's easier, easier than being stuck with an IV and an infusion. Is it better? Are there downsides? How will we be able to kind of assess that and be able to look at what are some of the trade-offs? So this table looks at IV, intramuscular, subcutaneous, intranasal, oral, sublingual, and transdermal. I know these are a lot of fancy terms, but at the end of the day, what I want you to focus on is the intranasal, which is spravato or esketamine. And I want you to look at IV, which is traditional ketamine. If you want more detailed about all these other different routes that it can be administered, we actually did a video looking at ketamine specifically and the modes and how it can be transmitted and utilized. Take a look at that video on our YouTube channel and it'll give you more information. But let's take a look at these two areas, which is row one and row four. So row one, what you can see is that the intravenous use is about 100% bioavailable, meaning the vast majority of the medicine that's given goes to where it's, it's needed when you use IV formulation. When you use the intranasal, it's about 30 to 50%, which is one of the reasons why the concentration has to be different. And in addition, because we're using that mirror image as opposed to the, both images, there's also some differences in terms of how well it works. So those things can be a bit challenging, but at the same time, it also can be useful. Traditional ketamine for most patients isn't gonna be covered by insurance. This product, the esketamine or spravato, is actually covered by insurance. And so to be able to use something that might give benefit can be useful. Let's look at another table that can give us more insight and information. So we take a look at traditional ketamine. The ketamine infusion goes into the IV, which goes directly into the bloodstream. As I just said, about 100% of it is bioavailable. So the utilization, the dosing is much smaller. When you use esketamine or the spray, it's sprayed into the nostril and nasal passage, and so only about 25 to 50% of it is present, but you can be able to work out a paradigm and a treatment that allows for benefit. So there's certainly utility for either case, and there's other things that you can use in combination that might be able to give you some benefit. So what's the purpose of Spravato is that it can be able to be utilized mainly, particularly here in the States, for depressive disorder and a lot of people haven't heard of it. And instead of you having to take a pill every day, this spray may be able to give you improvement in symptoms without you having to be reliant on a pill. Let's talk about some other studies and see really what makes sense. So one of the things that they looked at in that previous paper was the comparison of how intranasal compared to IV. And what they found is that for the most part, the element of IV may not be as good, rather, I'm sorry, IV can be a significant better response rate than just the intranasal alone. But there's, as stated before, no current FDA approval for traditional um, IV utilization, okay? So what are some other papers that talk about esketamine and see whether we can be able to get some more information and understand it a little bit better? So one of the things that was looked at was kind of that comparison, as I made mentioned before, of like racemic ketamine to esketamine for depression. And what they found was that the antidepressant effect can be able to influence something that's called BDNF in many patients, but the serum levels were severely elevated only at one week following their first ketamine infusion. And so at the end of the day, what we know is that there's some downstream 
upticks of different markers like glutamate and others that can be able to provide benefit. But one of the things that's interesting is because ketamine, traditional IV ketamine, can be utilized for pain relief. Could this possibly be beneficial for pain patients as well? Well, there's actually a study that was a pretty darn good study that looked at a phase two double-blinded placebo-controlled trial that looked at intranasal ischemia and chronic opioid refractory pain. Now, let me be absolutely clear. This is an off-label indication here in the States. It's not something that would be covered by insurance as of yet. It was actually performed outside of the States, but what they found was the following. What they found is they took 120 patients, and what they did find is that it appeared to be, as they assessed and were able to evaluate patients over a short period, which is somewhere around twice a week for four weeks, and looked at it for about um, patients that had pain for at least three months, they were able to say that it looks like patients with chronic pain may have had some degree of pain relief as well as improvement in quality of life. And that kind of goes in synergy with a lot of things that we've been seeing, whether it's TMS, IV ketamine, other treatments along those lines, where there's a link between mood and between actual physical pain. And sometimes by tying into being able to use treatments that might be beneficial for one, we may be able to get a benefit for the second as well. So is there utility behind using something like esketamine as a final kind of solution to something like this potentially be able to work for pain relief? And the final verdict is yes, it can be able to maybe be able to help benefit for pain, but it certainly can be able to help for mood and it's warranted to talk to your provider about so that you might be able to improve your overall depression that you might have in a new treatment paradigm, particularly for those individuals that have difficult to treat depression and hasn't been responsive to other medications. Thank you so much for joining as always. If you have questions or comments, please leave them below. And we look forward to talking to you again, discussing different treatment paradigms that let you be able to know all your different options to be able to live a full functional life, how to be able to punch pain in the face, how to be able to push depression away and get back to leading the life that you deserve. Thank you so much. And have a great day.